2.8 million years ago, the earth wasn't the earth that you see now. It was cold, dismal and a challenge for survival. The ground trembled under the mass of gigantic ice sheets stretching across continents, forming land bridges, making it possible for fauna to move around. Standing tall were glaciers, taller than mountains they say, carved deep valleys into the earth, the remnants of which we can still admire to this day. The prowlers of this time were towering woolly mammoths, some weighing up to 13,000 pounds and stood at a height of 11 feet. Draped in shaggy coats of thick fur, these giants dominated the steppes. In the shadows lurked the saber-toothed cats. Their teeth protruded out like daggered fangs as they waited for the perfect moment to strike. But nightfall brought out different beasts whose howls echoed through the endless thunder nights. The dire wolves. Further down south, where the land was untouched by the gales of chill and the air was filled with warmth and fuzz, giant sloths lumbered through thick jungles and armored glyptodons the size of small cars trundled along riverbanks. The Pleistocene wasn't just the Ice Age, it was a rhythmic cycle between freezing cold and fleeting warmth every hundred thousand years, where the ice would surge forward, engulf vast chunks of land, but retreat when the climate warmed up. Rivers changed courses, mountains rose and crumbled, and glacial land bridges appeared and disappeared, opening and closing paths of fauna to roam around. At some point in time, Siberia and North America were connected by the Bering Land Bridge, allowing mammoths and early humans to transmigrate. But in some other timestamp, this land bridge vanished beneath the rising sea levels, isolating these species once and forever. Around 14,690 years before present, there was a shift in climatic conditions. The Earth abruptly began to warm up in the Northern Hemisphere and the South cooled down. This period is called the Boiling Alarod Interstadial. It was a period of major ice sheet collapse, corresponding to a 52 feet and an 82 feet global sea level rise in about four to five hundred years. This event is called the Meltwater Pulse 1A, also known as the Catastrophic Rise Event 1 in the Caribbean Sea. Ice sheets melting, water levels rising, floods plundering entire landscapes. Such a tumultuous period in human history until 12,800 years before present. In this video, we'll know what was this catastrophe, what caused this catastrophe. If you're new, hit subscribe. As the old ones know, this video was long pending. The Earth had begun to thaw. Global temperatures rose as carbon dioxide concentrates had begun to delocalize. The great ice sheets retracted, brooks, rivers and canals puffed up with water as forests conquered the north. It seemed that the long place to see had finally come to an end. But around 10,800 BCE, the global temperatures took a complete 180 degree turn. It was so sudden, so unpredicted that it seemed instant. The ice returned and the winds howled with a new bitter cold. Across the continents, ancient lakes dried up and the rapidly exploding flora withered and the animals, already struggling for survival, collapsed in greater numbers. It was as if 
some wizard had cast an icy spell which would last for the next thousand years. This was the younger Dryas, the Earth's final cold snap before civilization began. Now, what can be the possible reasons for it? There are three. Let's dive into each of them. The Meltwater Pulse Hypothesis claims that a catastrophic release of fresh water from melting glaciers disrupted ocean currents, which led to global cooling. Here's how it might have played out. The melting of the Laurentide ice sheet in North America created massive proglacial lakes. A sudden breach in ice dams released trillions of gallons of fresh water into the North Atlantic Ocean. This influx of cold, fresh water shut down the Atlantic Meridional overturning circulation, which normally brings warm water northward. This weakened circulation caused Europe and North America to plunge into a deep freeze. The evidences that support this hypothesis are as follows. We can find geological records of ancient flood pathways, for example, the St. Lawrence River and the Mississippi Valley. Isotopic evidence of freshwater influx into the Atlantic may also serve as an evidence, and the AMOZ shutdown is a known cause of abrupt climate change shifts in climate models. Where the meltwater pulse hypothesis reaches a roadblock is the debate whether the release was systemic and gradual or whether it was torrential and turbulent. Many also question whether this event was sufficient enough to cause such dramatic cooling. The Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis claims that a comet or an asteroid impact triggered widespread fires, atmospheric changes and abrupt cooling. Here's how it might have played out. A fragmented comet or asteroid exploded in the atmosphere or struck the ice sheets. The explosion generated immense heat, igniting wildfires that released soot into the atmosphere, blocking sunlight. The impact also triggered shockwaves, dust clouds, and possible tsunamis, which contributed to global climate disruptions. The rapid reduction in sunlight caused swift cooling, plunging the planet into the younger dryers. The evidences that support this hypothesis are as follows. Tel Abu Hurera, a village in Syria, which is now submerged under Lake Assad, was a treasure trove of ancient dietary evidence. James Kennett, an earth scientist from UC Santa Barbara, says that the region suffered a shift from humid climatic conditions which were forested with diverse food sources for hunter-gatherers to drier, cooler conditions where they could no longer subsist only as hunter-gatherers. By studying the material remnants, his team discerned the change in diet from wild legumes, grains, fruits and berries to dependence on domestic type grains and lentils probably post the impact. A millennium after the cosmic event, the famous Neolithic founder crops flourished in the region, marking the rise of agriculture in the Fertile Crescent. Alongside this, within the younger Dryas aged sediments, a layer of nanodiamonds, microsperials, platinum and high temperature minerals have been found which play consistent with an extraterrestrial impact. Is there something acting like a roadblock to this hypothesis? Well, science is all about philosophy, evidence and debate and this hypothesis too has been put up for scrutiny. But let me tell you this, out of all three, this is the most convincing one. The volcanic eruption hypothesis tells us that a massive volcanic eruption or a series of eruptions released sulfur aerosols blocking sunlight and cooling the climate. 
here's how it might have played out. Large-scale volcanic activity or activities injected tremendous amounts of sulfur dioxide and ash into the stratosphere which caused a volcanic winter, leading to rapid cooling and altered atmospheric circulation. The evidences that support this hypothesis are as follows. Some ice core records indicate increased volcanic activity around 12,900 years ago. Similar volcanic events, for example, the Toba super eruption, which happened 74,000 years ago, caused significant cooling. Well, we don't know for sure that such a definitive volcanic activity is related to the Younger Dryas and the fact that the cooling lasted over 1000 years poses a question mark to its credibility. A lore and three big hypothesizers, quite the video of a nerd, but information is gold and seeking it is a gold mine. Well, if you really liked it, hit like and subscribe to this channel. And if you want, share it with your nerd amigos. And if you want me to make a video on the conspiracy theories related to the Younger Dryas by our favorite conspirators, I'll more than likely love to do it. And, you know, make sure you subscribe and keep seeking. I'll see you in the next one. Till then. Goodbye.